On May 20, 1941, one of the most daring military operations in history began. German airborne assault on the Greek island of Crete. Heavily underestimated the defenders' strength, the first waves of paratroopers and glider infantry began landing on the island at 8 a.m. Those who succeeded to reach the ground were immediately involved in one of the strangest and most chaotic battles of the Second World War. After successful German advance through the Balkans and the conquest of Greece, the German army found itself on the coast again. In front of them was a vast surface of the Mediterranean Sea, and on the other end was the British Mediterranean fleet. However, in the middle was a strategically important island of Crete. Situated approximately 100 kilometers from mainland Greece, the island of Crete dominates the eastern part of the Mediterranean. If the Germans succeed to take the island, it would be a perfect barrier to the potential British invasion of Greece. Also, the island would be an ideal airbase for air attacks against the British Navy and bases in North Africa. On the other hand, if the Crete remains under British control, it would present a permanent danger for the Germans in Greece, and most importantly, the Romanian oil fields would be in the range of the Royal Air Force, which would present a problem for the future German plans, during the invasion of the Soviet Union. Both sides recognized the importance of Crete. The first German plans for an invasion of Crete were drafted in mid-April, when the positive outcome of the campaign in Greece becomes obvious. In contrast to the conquest of France and Western Europe, when the German army also occupied the coast, this time, although they did not command the sea, they had complete air superiority. For that reason, the task for an attack on Crete was given to the Luftwaffe. The German paratroopers were an integral part of the Luftwaffe. By 1941, they had one complete airborne division, and an additional airborne regiment at their disposal. These units were an all-volunteer force with high morale, excellent leadership, and combat experience. The 7th Flieger Division, and a Luftlander Sturm Regiment, would spearhead the attack on Crete. First time in the war, a complete airborne division would take part in the assault. There was two opposite approach on how to use the paratroopers. General Alexander Lower, commander of Luftflotte 4, proposed one concentrated drop on the western side of the island, to seize the airfield at Malamé. Paratroopers would then be reinforced with infantry units and heavy equipment, airlifted to the island. The Crete would then be taken by a conventional advance, from west to east. The German high command was afraid that with such an approach, the British would have sufficient time to reinforce the defenders on the island, which would eventually lead to a long and exhausting campaign. General Kurt Student, commander of Flieger Corps 11, and commander of all airborne units, on the other hand, suggested seven separate drops, with the main focus on the three airfields on the island, at Malamé, Heraklion, and Rethymno. Both plans, recognized the area around Malamé and Harnia, as the main area of the attack. Situated on the western part of Crete, Malamé is the airport closest to Greece, and the best place to bring the reinforcements, and heavy equipment. Ultimately, a compromise was made. The final plan was codenamed Operation Mercury. Transport planes were assembled from all over Europe, and even then, there were not enough planes to transfer the entire division at once. For this reason, a decision was made to send paratroopers in several waves. According to the plan, the Luftlander Sturm Regiment, and a third regiment of the 7th Airborne Division, would land in the first wave, around the airfield of Malamé and Port of Harnia. The second wave, consisted of two battalions of the 2nd Regiment of the 7th Airborne Division, were to arrive on the island in the afternoon, with the same transport aircraft used in the first wave. The target of the second wave, was an airfield near Rathimnon. The third assault wave, would consist of the 1st Regiment, the 7th Airborne Division, and they would land in the area near Heraklion. The objective of the airborne troops, 
was to occupy at least one airfield on the island. Once the airport is secured, the 5th Mountain Division would be airlifted to the island to reinforce troops already on the ground. According to the plan, parts of the 5th Mountain Division would be transported by sea to Crete. This was almost a suicidal part of the plan, as the Royal Navy had complete control of the sea. Air cover was the task of the Flieger Corps 8, under the command of General Freiherr Wolfram von Richthofen. The Flieger Corps 8 had a very difficult task to provide constant air cover over the Crete, as well as to prevent the Royal Navy sea blockade. More than 100 Junkers Ju 87 Stuka dive bombers would act as air artillery and provide paratroopers on the ground with constant support. The Battle of Crete would be one of the rare occasions where Stuka dive bombers will show their true abilities. The German intelligence estimated that Crete is defended by 10,000 Commonwealth soldiers and the remnants of several Greek divisions. These estimates will prove completely wrong. The garrison on Crete had more than 40,000 men. Much more than Germans anticipated. Most of the troops were evacuated from Greece. However, although numerous, these units were forced to abandon artillery and other heavy weapons during the evacuation. This mixed force was named Cree Force, and it consisted of parts of the New Zealand Division, the 19th Australian Infantry Brigade, the British 14th Infantry Brigade, remnants of a few Greek divisions, and various other units. On 30 April 1941, Major General Bernard Freiburg, New Zealand Army officer, was appointed as a commander of all forces on Crete. His main concern was to protect the northern side of the island, fearing the invasion from the sea. Everything worth defending was located on the north side of the Crete, almost all the villages, ports, the only road, and all three airfields. From early May, Freiburg began to receive information about the German plans. The codebreakers from Bletchley Park intercepted and decoded multiple Enigma wireless traffic, related to Operation Mercury. By mid-May, General Freiburg knew that airborne invasion of Crete is imminent. The lack of motor vehicles, and the poor road network on Crete, prevent Freiburg, to form the mobile reserve. The only thing he could do was to deploy troops at the points, he considered most vulnerable. The New Zealand Division, was deployed in the western part of Crete, between Malame and Harnia. The 19th Australian Infantry Brigade was stationed in an area near Rathimnon. The British 14th Infantry Brigade defended Heraklion. Two infantry battalions, two Matilda tanks and the 10 light MK6 tanks, were held in reserve near General Freiburg's headquarters in Harnia. The tanks on the island were withdrawn from Greece. Being in service for months without proper maintenance, they were prone to malfunctions. The stage was set, for one of the bloodiest and fiercest battles of World War II. The lack of heavy artillery on both sides, meant that the fighting would be fought at close range. Many factors will play a role in the battle, including lack of supplies, poor communication, lack of judgment, and sheer luck.